Okay, we have all this information. We're going to make a nice huge table here. For the table, when you're sketching, what you're going to do, the first part is your intervals. And then the second part is going to be f of x. Then you're going to have f prime x. Then you're going to have f double prime x. And then you're going to have characteristics. So to do this, our intervals okay looking at all my data I have some vertical asymptotes which we're gonna put in our interval I have some critical numbers and points of inflections so looking at all this data the square root of 12 well that's between the square root of 16 and the square root of 9 16 is 4 9 is 3 so is this bigger or smaller than 2 bigger than 2. So my first interval is going to go from negative infinity to probably the negative square root 12. That would be correct. Out of my values, is that my smallest? Okay. And then you put x equals negative square root 12. You first do the intervals, and then in the intervals, you actually need to plug in the value of that spot. It's a little bit extra. My next interval is negative square root 12. Would it be to negative 2? Does that look right? And then we have x equals negative 2. And then we have negative 2 to what? What's my next one? 0? Does that look right? Think of 0. Then we have x equals 0. And then we have 0 to, is it 2? 0 to 2. And then we have x equals 2. And then we have 2 to, is the last one square root, two, square root 12? Hope I'm not missing something. And then we have x equals square root 12. And then we have square root 12 to infinity. Woohoo! That's going to be fun. Here we go. Now, what we need to do real quick, and I forgot to write these down, is we probably want our derivatives to look at. Okay? We have f of x is again x cubed over x squared minus 4, you have f derivative x is equal to x squared, no, x to the fourth minus 12x squared over x squared minus 4 squared. And you have the second derivative of x is equal to a simplified version of 8x times x squared plus 12 over x squared minus 4 cubed. Okay, those three, you need those three on this page because for all these columns, aren't we plugging into those three things? Okay, guys, hang in there. Here we go. Oh, can I put zero zero right there? Woohoo! Got a point. Yes. Okay. Here we go. For the interval, what's an easy value between negative infinity and negative square root twelve? Would negative four be a good one? Now, I'm just going to put do I need to actually find the value at that? No. So, but I'm going to be plugging in negative 4. When I plug in negative 4 to the first derivative, look at this. What's a negative 4 to the fourth? 
positive. Negative 4 squared, positive. But which one? That's kind of annoying. This also, okay, negative 4 down here. Is this bottom going to be positive? So the bottom's positive. The, the question is, when I put negative 4 here and negative 4 there, is negative 4 to the fourth or negative 12 times 16? Which one's bigger? X to the fourth is bigger when you plug in negative 4. So this is going to be a positive. You just have to know, okay, x, negative 4 to the fourth is really big. And then 16 times 12 isn't as big. When I plug it into the second derivative, right here, negative 4, that's going to be negative. This will become a positive. And then the bottom, won't that be positive? So you have a negative times a positive over a positive. Isn't that going to be negative? When we plug in the square root negative 12 right here, we're plugging in the original. Yes, that's going to be fun to do. Let me just tell you the answer. Negative 3 square root 3. Or negative square root 27. Are you guys okay with that? Isn't this 0 because wasn't it a critical number? And here, if we plug in that ugly number right here, OK. Well, if it's negative, won't that become negative? Positive, positive. So won't this be a negative? Any, if you look at this second derivative down here, if you plug in the negative, it's going to become a negative. OK. For this interval, probably negative 3. Would that work? Okay, we don't have to worry about this. The first derivative, when you plug in negative 3. When you plug in negative 3, will you just trust me, you get a negative? When you plug in to the second derivative, it's also a negative. You can go back and look at this on your own time. It's just going to take a while if I sit there and plug every single one in. Okay. Negative 2. Oh, we can do that one. What's negative 2 look like it's going to come out to be? Oh, nothing. Wasn't it an asymptote? Won't these all be does not exist? If it's an asymptote, won't those be does not exist? Won't this one too? Hey, that was the easy ones. Whew. Yeah, thank you. OK. What number do you want to plug in here? In this interval, negative 1? OK, skip that. Right here, when you plug in negative 1, I think I can look at this one. Negative 1 to the fourth, that's pretty easy. That's 1. I think 1 minus 12 is going to be negative. And won't that be positive? So you guys OK with that one being negative? I could plug in negative 1 here, too. Negative 1, that becomes negative 8. Positive, positive, I see a, wait. Wait, wait, okay, you plug in negative 1. Ooh, look at this, I almost messed up. This right here when you plug in negative 1 is what? Negative 8, this becomes a positive. This, what's negative 1 squared? What's 1 minus 4? Negative 3 cubed is actually a negative. This is actually a positive right here. I almost missed that. I almost missed that. OK. When you plug in 0, we already know that's 0. We already know that the first derivative is 0. And we also know the second derivative is 0. Remember back, critical numbers, points of inflections. When you plug in positive 1 to the first derivative, when you plug in positive 1, are you OK if I just tell you it's negative, negative? If you look at it, you'll see that. You plug in 1, plug in 1. OK, for this one, we'll probably plug in 3. When you plug in positive 3, are you OK just trusting me? 
Can I just kind of fill out this table for you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to fill it out for you. Okay. Again, for this one, I plugged in square root 12. For this one, I probably plugged in 4. For this, I plugged in 3. And you're plugging them into the first derivative and the second derivative. And all you're caring about is it's positive or negative. Whoa, that was a lot. And we're not done yet. Let's, on the test, you have to label your characteristics. So, positive first derivative means it's what? Increasing. And negative means it's sad. Concave down. What is this point going to be? If the first derivative is 0 and the second derivative is negative, isn't that going to be a relative what? That's going to be a relative max. Because isn't it look like this? And isn't it at the top of a frown? By the way, can you also look here? Positive the negative. This is the first derivative test. This is the second derivative test. Okay, negative means what? Negative means decreasing. Negative here means what? Happy or sad? Sad. Here it's a vertical asymptote. X equals negative 2. Here, decreasing or increasing? Decreasing, and it's, oh, it got happy. Got a happiness. Ooh. This one, does the increasing, decreasing change? Isn't, let's skip it for a sec. Isn't this decreasing? And isn't this all of a sudden sad? So if it goes decreasing, decreasing, could it be a relative, max or min? No. So if it can't be a relative max or min, look at the concavity. Does the concavity change? Yes. And does the second derivative equal zero? Yes. This is a P of I, point of inflection. It's not a PP of I anymore. It's actually a P of point of inflection. Got another vertical asymptote, x equals 2. Here we got decreasing and happy. Here. Wait, let's skip it. We got increasing and happy. So if it goes from decreasing to increasing, it's a relative what? It's a relative min. Now, real quick, um, what's the coordinate for this right here? Negative square root 12, correct? Comma. Negative 3, square root 3. That was really hard to see. And this one, isn't this one square root 12, comma 3, square root 3? Just those are coordinates of them, which aren't pretty. OK. Here we go. Let's put our points. We got 0, 0. Can we put this point right here? Negative square root 12, negative 3 square root 3. Which that basically isn't negative square root 12. Is that somewhere around like negative what? Like 3, 5 maybe? And this one, square root 27, isn't that like negative 5.2 or something? Are you OK? You don't need to know exact, but are you OK? Generally, we can kind of get a basic plot. So negative 3.5 and then negative 5.2, like somewhere around there. Are you guys okay with that? This one, is it the same numbers? It's that this one's going to be about 3.5 comma 5.2-ish. Kind of got those points down. OK. 
Okay. Oh, can we put asymptotes? I can put my asymptotes. Where are they at? Aren't they at 2 and negative 2? Okay, 2 and negative 2 got my asymptotes. Good. Okay. Oh, wait, what else other asymptote do we have? Then we have a slant. And the slant asymptote was y equals x. So doesn't that mean we start at 0, we go up 1 over 1? So won't there be some sort of slant asymptote in the middle of this graph? We OK? OK. Now, can you see there's probably going to be a graph chilling right here, hitting that red dot and turning around? Can you imagine that? Now, because you have all the asymptotes kind of controlling your, your movement. Let's just check. From this red dot to the left, isn't it increasing and concave down? So doesn't that mean it's probably going to do that? And then from the red dot to the orange line, isn't it decreasing and concave down? So can you imagine it looking like this? Does that follow my information? Is it also a Relative max, like it said. All right. Looking at this one. OK, this is a little bit hard. There's some sort of graph. By the way, could this graph go through this slant asymptote? Doesn't a slant asymptote talk about the end results, not the inside results? So even that, that slant asymptote's there, it's not part of the graph. It's not part of the middle of the graph. It's not. You can go through it. Anywho. Um, from negative 2 to 0, right here, it's decreasing but concave up. Can you imagine this? Isn't that decreasing but concave smiley up? Doesn't it have a slope of 0 at that point? Yeah. And then for the next interval, isn't it decreasing but concave down? Can you see that? Again, my graph's not perfect. But can you see? It, is that a point of inflection? Does it change happy to sad? Does it go decreasing? Does my slope equal 0 for a second? It kind of flattens out and levels again. It's OK if it goes through the slant asymptote. OK. For this interval, from the orange line to the red dot, that's, uh, where is that? Right here? So it's increasing, sorry, it's decreasing but concave up. You guys okay with that? It's decreasing but has a happy look to it. And then the last interval is increasing but concave up. So wouldn't that kind of be like that? Again, there's your important points. If you wanted to label them, isn't that a relative min, like we said here? Isn't this a relative max, like we said here on the table? Didn't we say it's a point of inflection at 0, 0? Does all our characteristics agree with the graph? Yes.